Hello everyone and welcome to HSE's vendor tutorial with the title Microfluidics is not the challenge, everything around it is. AKA how to overcome system development challenges in microfluidic diagnostics. To quickly introduce myself, I'm Matthias Kufal. I'm a senior system engineer at HSE, which is a system engineering company in Switzerland close to Zurich. My field of expertise is microfluidic-based cartridge development and system integration of point-of-care devices. My background is biomedical engineering, which I studied at the University of Dresden in Germany. Then I made my PhD at the University of Barcelona in the field of electrochemical biosensing. Afterwards, I was employed as a system engineer from Stat Diagnostica in Barcelona, where I helped to develop the cartridge and the instrument from scratch. Currently, this system is known under the brand Kaya Stat DX from KayaGen. Please stay tuned if you're interested in the main advantages of microfluidic devices, or if you want to have an inside look into a cartridge to see how microfluidics is implemented. I will also talk about microfluidics and its biggest challenges, and I will finish this tutorial with important aspects to develop a microfluidic device. So let's move on to the talk. What are the advantages of microfluidics? Microfluidics allow to automate complex sample workflows into one cartridge. So you can mix, you can filtrate, you can do a purification, amplification in one system and integrate it into a point of care device. Due to the low sample volume and the capability of multiplexing, the sample can be efficiently used and tested. And microfluidics allow the implementation of cell assays like single cell analysis, organ on chips, and even liquid biopsy are possible with microfluidics. Other new important microfluidics application areas, which are to be predicted a multi-billion dollar market, are CRISP diagnostics, whole genomic sequencing, and synthetic biology automation. Examples of devices on the market which are successfully using microfluidics to implement sample preparation of RNA and DNA to amplify them and measuring the DNA by PCR are the Gene Expert from Cephite, the Biofire Film Array from BioMilieu, or the Kyostat TX Analyzer from Kyogen. Hereby, the Kyostat TX cartridge allows the sample input of dry swabs and liquid samples. It can detect up to 48 different pathogens and it tests all the chemistry on board dry and wet to perform a full sample preparation in QPCR. In the following slides, I would like to explain how microfluidics is implemented in a cartridge which performs a sample preparation based on a lysis, wash, bind and dilute process using a membrane. You can see the cartridge components which are necessary to implement such functions. Here is the cartridge body which has reagents, liquid reagents on one side and the microfluidic network with microfluidic channels on the other side. You see, can see the cartridge cover and the components inside the cartridge to perform the lysis. So it's called here the bit beta, the purification chamber and the membrane and a container for the storage of the dry chemistry. Okay, let's have a look how the microfluidics is implemented in such cartridge. You have the microfluidic channels in one plane on one side, see it with a thin film. Then you have a 3D wave with an inner chamber. This 3D wave sits in the middle of the cartridge and can be moved horizontally. The 3D wave is connected to the pneumatic system of the instrument here on the side. By applying a pressure, you can move the liquids around using the 3D wave. This you can do, for example, with a negative pressure when you move the TC to a position where the inner chamber is connected to the channels which are connected to a reagent chamber. You can drive out these reagents by applying a negative pressure. Then you have the liquid inside the chamber. And when you move the chamber around, for example, to another position where channels are connected to a chamber in the upper part, you can apply a positive pressure and push out the liquid. And this is how you can move liquid around inside the cartridge step by step by applying positive or negative pressure. You could ask yourself why we don't see more devices available on the market using microfluidics if microfluidics has so many advantages and seems to be easy to implement. Well, first of all, microfluidics is not that easy to implement. In case of this cartridge, you need the genius idea of the 3D wave with the transfer chamber. Then you have other challenges to overcome to integrate 
these microfluidics in a low-cost cartridge and instrument. Other big challenges of microfluidic devices for diagnostics are that microfluidic is competing against lateral flow assays, which are well established and clinically accepted. Also the economy of scale for lateral flow assays and its infrastructure is well built. Otherwise, for microfluidic devices, this is not the case. You have many challenges to overcome with the compatibility of reagent storage and mass fabrication technique. There are nearly no standard components available for microfluidics related to economy of scale. Further, the integration of fluidics into a low-cost, easy-to-use and highly reliable instrument remain the biggest challenge. In fact, here it is not helping that from research provider technologies often give a chip in a lab solution and not the promised lab on a chip. A standard material is still PDMS, which is expensive material and not suitable for the economy of scale. Often very expensive equipment like pumps are used to drive the microfluidics. In summary, the lack of reliable, low-cost integration technologies for microfluidic components like wells for example, or even the connection of fluidic channels are big challenges to overcome to build your microfluidic device. Further, the clinical acceptance by physicians and central labs remain a big challenge for microfluidic devices, as the physician demanding a high reliable product with a similar performance than central lab instruments, and it has to be user-friendly. All these challenges have to be overcome to be successful with a microfluidic device for the diagnostic market. I will now talk about the most important aspects to develop a microfluidic device. Therefore, I will give you five important rules to start a microfluidic device development. Rule number one, truly and deeply understand and know your application or workflow. Rule number two, know your customer and build appropriately your business case. Here, also concentrate on the cost per sample, target cox, and how many units to sell in the first three years. Rule number three, find out the most important requirements, constraints, and functions to be implemented in your microfluidic device. Rule number four, establish a reference workflow, meaning you need to have a reference using standard material and standard instruments available on the market. And last but not least, rule number five, start with the concept of the cartridge or chip and build the instrument around it. These five important rules will help you a lot to start the development of a cartridge and an instrument. And especially for the cartridge, I will now show you our three-step approach we are applying at HSE to develop a microfluidic cartridge. First, you establish a sample pool. So depending on your pathogens, you want to detect with your microfluidic device. And regarding these pathogens, you establish a reference workflow to detect these using well-known benchtop or automated solutions. In the second step, you create functional models to individually test and develop workflow functions. You can create modules with one or more functions, but the key to success is to iterate against the reference workflow. And another tip would be to create modules based on various different concepts to have a widespread solution space for your workflow functions to be implemented in the microfluidic device. In a third step, you integrate those modules together to a complete system. This can be done stepwise, but you also can do it all at once. It depends on the complexity of your microfluidic device. Also here in this third step, you iterate against the reference workflow, but you also can iterate against the functional model. This three-step approach helps to develop efficiently a microfluidic device. In this picture here, you can see different development stages of a cartridge. From left to right, you see that first a prototyping material was used to start the development. But early the material was changed to the mass fabrication material and technology. And this is another tip for you. Start as early as possible with your mass fabrication material and technology in the development of a microfluidic device. Also, you can see here that the functions have been implemented stepwise. Empirically, you will improve your cartridge, solving problems and issues along the way to development. But I have to say, the key to success to develop such microfluidic device 
is the coordination of all competencies you need for the development. Here's an example for all the competencies you need to develop a complete microfluidic system. As you build your instrument around the microfluidic device, it is important that system engineering translates the biological results and findings to the engineering departments, like precision mechanics or software and algorithm development. The instrument development demands a high level of expertise to integrate the microfluidic device, always with the aim to develop a high reliable, low cox system. And ideally, you have all these competencies on the one roof to efficiently coordinate such. HSE can deliver such competencies and we could be your experienced partner understanding your needs. We have many years of system development experience for automation of complex workflows. We can offer lifecycle management, ensuring form, fit and function, and application level verification and documentation to ensure regulatory compliance. We also have well-equipped S2 laboratories to test applications. We can handle the design transfer to manufacturing scale-up. And we have IVD compliant infrastructure with global manufacturing partners. So let's discuss your challenge. You can contact us under info at hseag.com. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.